Uh, thank you so much. It's uh, great to be back at Verge. Um, you know, Eric had mentioned that last year at this point in time, everything went dark. So I had uh, prepared at least 10 or 15 minutes of um, idle ch chit chat to get through something like that. And then I don't need it. So um, what can I say? Uh, it's, I'm really thrilled to be back here this, uh, this year for Verge. Um, it was exciting to see the microgrid. Uh, when I graduated from electrical engineering uh, a number of years ago, back in the 70s or so, um, I started uh, doing renewable energy. And one of the, uh, the analysis I had actually done was on ice storage as a, as a means to store energy uh, to shift the load for one of the clients. So, it's a fascinating now. I'm certain that they're a lot more sophisticated about how they would uh, use the ice uh, air conditioner to, to uh, save energy, but uh, store energy. Uh, but it's amazing how 40 years later, the same ideas are still relevant as we find ways for a more sustainable future. Uh, you know, the timing of this Verge conference probably couldn't be any better. Uh, in the sense that this past weekend, we celebrated the return home of Hokulea. And there, <laughs> you know, and their Malama Honua voyage, uh, one island, uh, one earth. Uh, and the whole notion that an island community here in the middle of the Pacific uh, can make an impact about uh, making people around the world uh, care about sustainability and about the future of our one planet that we all share. So it, it is terrific timing, I think, uh, for you to be here, uh, for this conference to be la launching. You know, we have been um, definitely focused on how our island communities are more greatly impacted by global warming and climate change. You know, island communities are on the front lines. We see sea level rise. We see our highways um, being covered and, and um, eroding. We see our shorelines changing. Uh, we see our coral dying. Uh, and we see more severe weather events. The last uh, three summers have been um, the most uh, named storms and hurricanes uh, in the history of Hawaii. Uh, so clearly, in our island community, we are much more aware of the effects of climate change, global warming, and sea level rise. And that really has resulted uh, in Hawaii uh, being very aware that what happens in the planet, in the energy space, clearly affects us here in Hawaii uh, more, more greatly than other communities around the world. Uh, so yes, we are still the only state that's committed to 100% renewable uh, energy for electricity. Uh, and although there's others talking about it, um, I, I'm still proud of all of us here in the state of Hawaii uh, that we are still the only state. Um, and as Eric had mentioned, uh, we did become the first state uh, to align with the Paris Accord, really committing to reducing greenhouse gases, uh, committing to capturing more carbon, being more thoughtful about how what we do impacts our environment uh, because we know uh, that leadership can start at home. That's what Hokulea taught us, that we here in Hawaii can make a statement uh, and can lead the world if it's important enough to us. And clearly, we believe that energy efficiency, sustainability is a very, very important issue, and we are stepping forward to lead. Um, we know, uh, besides the 100% uh, percent uh, renewable energy for electricity, that we are uh, on track and actually ahead of schedule. Uh, we went from 9% uh, 
of our electricity being generated by uh, clean renewable energy to 26% by the end of 2015. Uh, and we are ahead of schedule to hit 30% by 2020. You know, we know that this has an impact and I am proud of our counties. I know that Mayor Arakawa is here from the Maui, uh, county of Maui, uh, but our counties are doing uh, better than uh, Oahu is. Hawaii Island is at 54% renewable today. Kauai is at 42% renewable, and Maui is at 37%. Uh, so we are making significant progress uh, to getting off of fossil fuel and into clean energy uh, more aggressively than any other community um, in the United States. Uh, we do know that reducing our reliance on imported fossil fuels um, really does uh, have a significant impact. Uh, since our commitment to clean energy a number of years ago, uh, we've reduced the oil burn for electricity by 23% overall. Uh, and that really has been replaced by solar, wind, um, biomass, uh, and other clean energies. Uh, but that's, it doesn't end there because we do know that there is much, much more work to be done. Um, our energy needs in the islands, uh, the imported fossil fuel that we bring here, uh, about five to six billion dollars worth a year, a third is for electricity generation, and two thirds are for transportation. About a third for uh, autos and trucks, and about a third of that is for air, fuel uh, for airlines. Uh, so we started working on transportation. Uh, we know that transportation has significant uh, impact on our fossil fuel use. Uh, and that uh, if we just focused on electricity that we could at best get to one third of the fossil fuel impact that we have. So I did ask uh, Ford Fuchigami, my uh, director of transportation, to lead our efforts on infusing clean energy into the transportation sector. We've had a number of summits and forums to begin the conversation about what is it that we need to do to move off of fossil fuel into clean energy. Uh, Ford definitely knows about leading by example. And so the Department of Transportation has been doing its part to reduce um, energy, reduce fossil fuel use, uh, and more importantly, to drive um, to clean energy uses. Um, by, I guess, the end of this year, uh, we'll be using 43% less fossil fuel uh, for our highway systems on Maui and Oahu. And that really is by uh, installing uh, LED lighting and other more energy efficient systems. Uh, we know that we can uh, continue to do more. Uh, we are also uh, looking at and being close to 50% uh, energy reduction uh, for Hawaii, Maui, Oahu, and Kauai airports uh, through the installation of high efficiency lighting uh, and clean energy systems. You know, our airports will, are also working on reduction of oil consumption uh, on the island of Maui, where the airport uh, is the biggest public works um, project uh, in the history of Maui. Uh, we are putting an elect uh, electric tram system uh, within the airport so that we can reduce the circulation of uh, buses uh, and other transportation to get um, visitors from the rental car uh, to the terminal and vice versa. We are also installing uh, PV systems at Daniel K. Inouye International Airport in Honolulu um, and other um, re clean renewable energy projects within the Department of Transportation. We all know that we need to continue to do both, uh, work on reduction of energy consumption uh, at the same time that we uh, move forward with uh, clean, sustainable energy systems. Uh, and that's the best way to make the biggest impact on our environment. Um, 
We have also been moving uh, in the general community on a number of initiatives. Uh, the Hawaii uh, Energy uh, Organization, who uh, is funded by our utilities to reduce and introduce energy efficiency, conservation, um, and renewable energy projects in the consumer space, uh, has been aggressively promoting uh, rebates for installation of energy efficiency systems that will deliver 1.2 million kilowatt hours of energy savings over the lifetime of the equipment at just a cost of just two cents per kilowatt hour, which is significantly uh, below the, the current cost. Uh, that's equivalent to a 64 acre solar farm, enough to power uh, 195,000 homes uh, for a year. And we do know that these energy efficiency programs, especially as the uh, state is one of the biggest energy consumers, uh, have just as much impact as uh, putting in a generation system. The investment in energy efficiency will reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions by nearly one million tons. So we know that these energy efficiency as well as clean energy uh, projects are vital to our success to moving to a new clean energy future. Uh, we do believe that we need to work in parallel to have the biggest impact in our communities. Um, on, in March, uh, we are moving to uh, assisting our community to make more energy efficient buildings as we move forward. I signed it, uh, a new building uh, energy efficiency code, which covers the construction of new buildings and renovation of re residential, commercial, and state buildings. Uh, energy savings in the first year of the new building code is expected to produce 12,000 megawatt hours, uh, which is equal to a total energy savings of just of 1,900 uh, Hawaii homes in just the first year of application. Uh, so making these systems um, are important as we attack and make progress on reducing our fossil fuel use. Uh, we are proud that Hawaii uh, is leading the nation in the use of energy performance contracting uh, to implement energy and water efficiency projects uh, using the energy savings uh, to pay for the projects. Uh, projects comprise over 112 million square feet in 295 buildings uh, all around the state. Uh, energy savings from these projects are estimated at $1.1 billion over the life of the contracts. So we know and understand that these public-private partnerships can get us real savings and reduce greenhouse gases at the same time. Uh, so we definitely are committed to these performance contracts as a way to accelerate our progress and reduce our um, carbon footprint. Um, we continue to invest in our public schools. You know, I'm a graduate of Pearl City High School and proud of it. Uh, and yes, two years ago, uh, we had the hottest uh, summer on record um, and our children could not think and concentrate in the hot classrooms. You know, we had, uh, although it's hard to believe, classrooms that uh, had topped out at more than 110 degrees uh, with uh, several days where uh, it was unbearably hot uh, and really unacceptable. Uh, so we started uh, our initiative to cool the schools and cool the classrooms. Uh, and although most didn't really pay attention to the details, it really was a combination of um, air conditioning, energy efficiency systems, uh, photovoltaic systems, a comprehensive way to cool schools and reduce energy consumption at the same time. You know, I'm glad to say that we are in the, the final stretch run. Uh, we are installing more than 100 uh, air conditionings probably per week during this time period. Uh, by the end of this summer, we will exceed our goal 
of cooling 1,000 classrooms um, by a few, uh, and, and all in time for the start of the next school year, uh, where our students will benefit from um, cooler classrooms. At the same time, we'll probably be using less energy when we started this initiative. Uh, so that's a great win-win situation for our children. You know, getting back to the purpose of this conference, it's really to bring um, great minds and business acumen, uh, university and others uh, in the energy space to really get together and talk story and try and find ways to help each other, help us uh, as we drive to a clean energy future. Uh, I, yesterday, I signed a couple of bills that are really important to moving our innovation economy forward. Uh, we all know that at the heart at most innovative innovation communities is a thriving university. Uh, and I'm a proud graduate of the University of Hawaii. Uh, yesterday, I signed a, a couple bills that really advances innovation uh, in the university space. The first dealt with our state ethics code and really allows for a more modern and updated method for our faculty and staff at the university uh, to be able to participate in any innovations or uh, inventions that they create um, that drives our uh, innovation economy forward. So that was the first piece. The second bill really created a mechanism for the, the university to participate in business startups um, and startup companies. Uh, so that they can become not only an intellectual property partner, uh, but an equity partner uh, in any new ventures that are created that allows the university to drive innovation and new business startups. Um, so we continue to build this innovation uh, entrepreneurship uh, partnership because we know it's so important to moving our innovation economy forward. Uh, so I just want to thank you for being here to join the Verge Conference. Uh, I'm excited about the opportunity and about the conversations that will occur uh, in the next few days. Uh, I am proud that Hawaii has chosen to lead in clean renewable energy space in our commitment to the Paris Agreement, in our commitment to reducing greenhouse gases, our commitment to clean energy production, uh, our commitment to cleaning up transportation because we all know that we have choices to make and we can choose to sit on the side or we can choose to lead and be counted. In Hawaii, we believe in leading. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you for deciding to join us. I welcome you and look forward to the conversation and the synergy that will occur at this conference. Mahalo.